Okay, I think I have it all set up. We hope. Hi, Joy, how are you? Yeah, I don't have an echo. I'm good. <coughs> Except I can't see chat. Why can't I see chat? I'm good, Joy. How are you today? Oh, Lordy. How to play with my windows. Hi, Stephen. How are you? Thank you for coming. So today we're going to work on junk journal ephemera stuff. For our junk journal. I made tags the other day on. Um... Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that, Joy. I made tags the other day on Maddie's channel. We altered time cards. So I altered my time cards with matte paper. And I was thinking about matte paper envelopes or maybe like recoding this so that this shows up, you know, different things. Because it's a complete junk journal. And I still haven't had a chance to coffee dot the mat paper. And then I also have book pages ready to go and different coffee dyed paper scraps that we can use. So it's a couple of different ways to make pockets. So I think let me set some of this aside over here and is everything clear today or is it still blurry hi tina hi mia i'm so glad steven and steven is new to the channel so we need to welcome steven to our channel and so because on youtube it still looks like it might be a little bit blurry to me and i'll see if i can Fix it. So one thing we can do. I'm going to. Cut this in half. Because I don't want pockets that tall. We can make like a library pocket. And that's. I want to cut a little bit off of that. And there we go. So now. Oh, you are so welcome. I'm doing good, Mia. I'm, I'm late getting started today, but other than that, I'm doing good. So I'm just going to put some glue here. And glue across that bottom part. Now we have a pocket we can use, and we need to put a thumb mark. So I'm going to roughly center this. It's not going to be perfect, probably. And now we've got a little thumb hole. And see, it's off center. But the beauty of a handmade journal, it's not perfect. So now we'll do another one. Same way. And I'm just going to cut a little tiny sliver off of there. And a little teeny sliver off of there. And I think I want to glue it. And that's not even folded straight. And I want to glue here. So this is one kind of a pocket. And I like these kind of pockets because you can get a lot in them.
So what kind of pockets do y'all like in your journals or tuck spots? That kind of thing. And so now we have this pocket made. And it needs a little mark. That's better. And it does look blurry on YouTube. Let me see if I can get that to be better. Uh. Okay, I think I can close that window. Yes. Webcam settings. Hi, Mary. Thank you for coming. How are you today? I bet you autofocus is on again. And see, I always forget to come in here and turn that thing off. Nope, it is off. Well. Okay. I got 50 million windows open. So now let me put my hand on the screen so I can tell when it catches up. Or I'll move the glue. It still looks a little blurry, but that's a little bit better. Let's do this. Okay, now... Turn it back off again. I may have to leave the autofocus on because as soon as I unclick it, it's like it blurs back out. It's so weird. I think we're just going to go with it. Today, Mary, we are making stuff for our junk journal. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. And so we have this little strip, but we're not going to get rid of the little strip because this little strip can become a pocket or a tuck spot. So that's what we're going to do. Now, what I do, because I don't like the bulk in the corners, we are going to get rid of the bulk in the corners. Like that. And I don't have any idea how many pockets. Oh, I should not have put the glue on there yet. So I'm not gluing it into the book. So, and so I shouldn't have put glue there either. We'll just let this one dry. But that part will stay glued together. And now we have this cute little nappy pocket. And I'm going to set it back there so nothing else gets on that glue. Okay, now to make an envelope, you need a square sheet of paper. So, Or for one type of envelope, you need a square sheet of paper. And then fold it the other way. And then you bring this up to the middle.
and I'm going to apply a little bit of glue here. So you don't need the little fancy punch boards and all that stuff. I mean, they're great. I'm not knocking punch boards and the tools. But you don't have to have all that fancy stuff, guys. You don't. And so this doesn't seem to want to stick. We'll put a little dot right there. And then I just come back up here. And our envelope looks a little wonky. But that's okay. It's more like a trapezoid than a rectangle or a square. But there we go. We can stick this in our book. And we can make it one of those little upside down flippy ones. It's kind of big, but on a page where we're not going to be doing journaling, that would be perfect. So stick it over here with the other pockets. Um, another kind of envelope you can make, let's get one of these more oblongy pages. Is you take a page, let's see, how do I, I want the nappy part outside. And you kind of like trifold it. Again, this is rough. I'm not measuring anything. Okay, then what you do is I'm going to use this side as reference because we need flaps here and here. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to cut up to my mark to that fold line and cut across. Over here, same thing. Up to the fold line. And cut across. Now what I have is I have two, well I will have two flaps in just a moment. So I'm going to do that. How was that angled? angle this way oh shoot I'm recutting my paper because I cut that one off wrong okay we can adjust it because that's where our flap is going to be or our yeah our foldy down flap Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to fold these little side flappies in. And I hope I'm on camera. That we just created these little side flaps. We're going to put glue on here. Fold up the bottom. And this is where I just do any kind of rough trimming that's needed. Just don't cut the edge or your envelope won't be closed anymore. And then I like to take my big corner rounder and round the corners. which it might be full. No, it's not full. Okay, so now we have our corners rounded. Then we need something to hold it closed. So, I've been making... Oh, let me find the map one. Here they are. Oops. I've been making these little circle things. And this is just attaching paper to cardstock and cutting it out. So I have some map ones. And that would be perfect right here to hold the envelope closed. So we just want to put glue on about half of this circle. And just glue it down. And now we've got to, once, it's, once this glue dries, we've got a closure for our envelope. I like it. 
So what do you guys think? Different ways to make envelopes and things. And I have no fancy tools for this whatsoever. I mean, I have the corner cutters because you need those. Only because I can't round a corner. To save my life, I can't round a corner. I can't cut a straight line either. So, book pages. I have book pages that are already, these are already glued together, the middles, because I usually trim mine anyway. So, and I thought I got some of the coffee dyed ones. Maybe not. These have not been coffee dyed in any way. But this makes it like almost like a card stock. And I want to cut this bottom margin, which doesn't matter because I'm fixing to alter this all the way. Now, we can take a piece of our matte paper. Ooh, I like that side. And I kind of like all the white, so and that pretty much will fit our book page. So, we need a glue stick. And I like the purple, it's got scrappy paper. I like the purple glue sticks because you can see where you've applied it. And it starts to go clear when it's ready to be dry. Okay. So now what we're going to do is line up my map paper to my book paper. Now I have a decision to make. Am I going to look at both sides of this? Or is it going to get glued in? Because it's going to be a, a, a pocket. So if I decide I want to see both sides, I would fold this back over. Because Patricia Diamantes makes what she calls a hanging. And this would be great for that if we don't trim this off yet. And I will show you what we're doing. She calls it a hanging or floating taggy pocket like thing so let's put our glue stick on this side of our paper so we're just going to decorate both sides of this at one time now if you're going to glue it down and you know that ahead of time don't worry about covering the back And you can keep book paper showing because I've done that and we're going to probably do that on a couple. Okay, so what she does, we have this at the top that's not glued. Oh, yay. Should have thought about that. I'm going to try to peel this back for a second. This needs to be glued as best as possible now that I've folded the papers over Okay, there we go. She will take and put a fold here. And now it becomes, and you can round these corners, which I should probably wait for the glue to dry, but we're not going to. Let go of my paper. Oh, it just ate that paper up. That's okay. We'll fix it. There we go. Okay. And I want to trim this edge because it's not straight. There we go. Okay. 
So now we have this. This is a hanging pocket. So, I mean, it's a hanging thing. You hang it. Oh, I don't have a journal hanging. We'll use this paper. So if this is your journal page, this would hang like this over the top and you could paper clip it. However, we're talking to me. You could also take a paper clip because I have them pre-made. <laughs> Y'all know I have these pre-made. And in here where it's folded, you could glue your paper clip. And now it will clip over the page. And I think that's what I want to do. So I need to trim my paper clip off, at least on this one side. Just a smidgen. Okay. So for this, we are not using glue stick. We are going to use tacky clip. And the great thing is, once this is all built and everything, it's removable. And you can put it, you know, over your page anywhere. Over any pages in the journal. So I'm just going to kind of roughly center that. Press that down. Flip it over. I have rethought paper clips completely, you guys. I mean, yes, I started out making the little paper clip beads and stuff. There's so much more than paper clip beads. And now I have this matte paper, which is, we're not going to see this. When it's clipped, this part will not be seen. So I'm not going to worry about cutting that off. Okay. So now what can we don't, it's just a hanging thing. We need it to be a pocket or something. So that's where some of these scrap papers that y'all can't see come in. So here's some scrap papers. So what we can do is I have this coffee dyed. Oh, that's pretty. But it's very thin. So for this, I would want to double it. And do I want the pocket to be that tall? Probably not. So let's fold it down a little bit. We'll make the top part stronger. Okay, I think we're just gonna, we're not going to worry about doubling it. We're just going to Oh, how long is this? Okay. I want to fold a flap in. Kind of straight would be great. Go over here, fold a flap in. And come down to the bottom. And we're going to nip off the corners again. Because I don't like that bulky stuff. Okay. So now we need this. We do need to glue some stuff now. And I kind of want to get rid of this bulky corner stuff here too. Because all we're trying to do is strengthen the where the stuff goes in and out because that's what's going to get used the most. Okay. Fold that in. Oh, now we're not going to mess up like we did last time. We're not ready to put this in anything. So all we need to do, I think I'm going to do it this way. I didn't leave a lot of room. Oh, wait, we can put it in. We got our, so since we can put it in, we're going to. Let's see, we want to glue this little flappy down and these little flappies. And then we're going to line this up like so. Hi, Lady Vamp. How are you? Thank you so much for coming. I didn't see you till just now. I apologize. But hello. Welcome her. She's just, 
she's new to the channel as well let's welcome her and she has a great channel you guys and I think she's got it figured out now, but she was affected by the YouTube changes, the you can't go live thing. Okay, so now we have this that's going to clip over our page. So on, when this clips over, where's a page again? Oh, wait a minute. I just messed that all up, didn't I? We're not going to even see that pocket. Well, phooey. We're not going to see that pocket. But if you unclip it, it's a secret pocket. Look at it as a secret pocket. <laughs> That's funny. I just messed that all up. Um, so this is going to clip on the page like this. You won't see the back. So we're going to decorate the front now. That's funny. But it is a secret pocket for people who like secret places to put stuff. This is perfect because they could write a note, put it in here, clip it to the page. No one will know it's there except for the person who wrote the note and stuck it in here. So... Um, on this side, there's a couple of different things because we have all this stuff over here. We could make a side tuck pocket. We could put another pocket at the bottom. I kind of am leaning toward a side tuck pocket and making it out of this blue notebook paper. And this probably was grid paper. And I don't want to lose this. Oh, I don't want to lose that part. So, let's refold. Because that's so gorgeous. That spot that came out when my coffee died. So. And then we're going to apply this on here. And it will become a side tuck. For wherever this is hanging, we have this side tuck spot. I know I love secrets and journals, and you really sometimes need a spot to put something that you don't want anybody to know about. So let's glue this. So it was a happy accident. So we're going to glue this down. And now, do you want us to call you lady or I've been on your channel and I don't know your name, which is horrible. So I don't know if you how you want us to call you. Hi, Bootsy Sweethearts. Thank you so much for coming and welcome. I know this is your first time. Thank you so much, everybody. Welcome, Bootsy. Yay. Bootsy, I love your stuff. So now what we're going to do, and Bootsy, do we just call you Bootsy? Is we are going to roughly measure this because I don't, I don't measure and I don't have a lot of the fancy tools. I have corner cutters and, you know, basics, but. I think, you know, I'd rather spend my money on other things. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this and glue this. And this makes this to where you can tuck something thicker in it. You could put a little booklet in here. Uh-oh. Well, we'll just center it on the page. There is no uh-ohs. Now we have some other options. Nancy, okay, great. Thank you. Or LV. Okay. And Roy is Bootsy Sweethearts. And I knew that, Roy. And I forgot. So now we have some other options. So we could decorate this up. We could wait till we get it in our journal to decorate it. And it looks like this is some wonky stuff. If it is, we'll straighten it up. And I think waiting till we get it in the journal to decorate it is probably when we know where it is. Because we might want to put lace. Because even though this is a junk journal, and I'm limiting myself to, for those of you who are new, if you go back and watch my, my channel, I make a lot of journals, but I make them from journal kits, generally. This one is totally junk, 
a junk, total junk journal. I'm limiting myself to not printing out things. I'm making all of my own ephemera. Um, my little Tim Holtz paper dolls, which are, yes, they are printed, but I didn't print them. May make some appearances in this journal. Um, so I'm not going to use anything that I print out for this. So that's why matte paper, book paper, ledger paper, it's all coffee dyed in the journal. Um, let's see. I have it in a project bin. Let me go over here and grab my project bin. Oh, and I have coffee dyed cut off stuff. Yay. In the project bin. So... I will show you guys, for those of you who are new, what we're working on here. And I'll show you our tags. And we need to cut these peoples out for journal cards. We made them last week. And this is the extra paper. Okay. So, this is roughly our journal. It's going to go like this. This is going to fold over. It's probably going to get fluffy. Oh, Mary. So this is a complete junk journal. So this is going to be the signature. I don't know how many pages this is, but it's, and we've got pockets on pages um, that we need to like glue down before I sew it in. We got flip out pages. Another flip. This is a, uh, oh, that's kind of thick. What is this? It's an envelope. Okay, it's a pocket that goes here. Dictionary paper. Another pullout that may become, a, and see, this may not be a pullout. We could opt to make this a pocket. Um, the reason it's not sewed in yet is because I want matte, coffee dyed matte paper in here and I haven't had a chance to get that done yet. This is a double pocket in the middle. This is an envelope flip out with a secret pocket on it. A little tuck down here at the bottom. And let's see, more coffee dyed book paper. And we didn't, we couldn't decide what we were doing with this yet, whether we want it to be. We could leave this as a flip out and still have the pocket. We just have to kind of figure that page out. So this is the journal that we're making the ephemera for. We made the cover from leftover painty papers. And there is a tutorial video below for that. So this is leftover painting papers of mine from last year applied to craft paper. And then I just painted the inside. Now, y'all, I saw on Artie Mays where she was making one like this or her one like this, because this is where the idea came from. She made a tag, which I made this from this leftover piece of paper, which is still my painting papers. And I stamped on it in case this gets too fluffy, which we know with me could happen. This could be glued in here. And then, so if this is way fluffy, because I make fluffy puffies. We're just not going to say anything. You then have like an extension that will let it pull over further. So if this needs to not, if, if, if it grows way too much, that this wouldn't work. This will. So. I have this on reserve in case we need it, which we probably are going to need it. I know I love, I love coffee dyed paper. It's all crinkly. And so I coffee dyed all of this paper. <coughs> so we're just going to keep this in here. We made, I am squinching myself up into a nothingness again. Okay. We made these tags live out of my painting paper. 
these ones. And they're going to go in our book. So these were made from painty paper with napkin on them. I have black and white napkins um, and some little butterfly napkins. These are the ones where I altered the time cards last week on Maddie's channel. So there are time cards under here. I shouldn't have covered the whole time card. And they all have pockets. So these are the tags that I made from matte paper, which we're now making matte paper pockets and stuff. So it's a theme. Um, pockets on the front. So they all have little pockets. And then this one, I had a napkin and I collaged some matte paper on it so that it would kind of match because I put the matte paper pocket. Let me... Oh, thank you. Um, and I forgot your name that fast. So I'm looking, I'm going back up. Hang on. <laughs> so bad. Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. And I make a lot of journals, but my first ones, if you go back on my first videos, they were junk journals and it was going to be a huge junk journal. I like that, Roy. I do. And it was going to end up being, it was not usable. You couldn't open the pages. It was like 45 degree angle. Um, it became triplets for that reason. Mine aren't deliberate either. But I call them happy mistakes. It's just like on that paper clip, I put a pocket on the back that we're not going to see. So now it's a secret pocket that whoever gets the journal will have. A place to put secret stuff. So, that's on here. So, you're not going to see this when this is clipped on a page. So, we have our tags made. I'm going to put these back in the journal. And I'm going to put it back in its project book. And so, we just made this. And then, let's see. I have this one that's glued together. And these are just books that I've. I purchased some books from Dollar Tree. Actually, some of these are, this is an old book. But when I read a book, I can only read it once, you guys. And so I have books and books that I'm not going to reread because I can't. Not the way my brain works. I can't do that. So, um, and I have older books. This is what you do with them. I pick out which ones I want to use the covers of, get the book. Now I have the book paper. We all have book paper blocks. Or pretty much. Okay, Nancy. Hi, Kelly and Robin. Thank you for coming. So we all have book blocks. And this is a great way to use your book blocks. So for this one, I think... I want to kind of leave the book text on here a little bit. So, um, let's see. I'm thinking what we want to do. We could collage on it and leave some book text showing through. But, I think I want to take, maybe in the vein of collage, just put like a strip of matte paper on here. Not even a big strip. Just a strip. So we're going to get our glue stick again. Because the glue stick is great for this. Oh, and that's an empty glue stick. So it goes in the garbage. And I've been trying to figure out how to do the craft room tour, y'all. Because um, now they took away the opportunity for me to go live until I get to a thousand subscribers. Yay, YouTube. I can't record it live. I can't do it live. Yes, happy Easter, everybody. I'll be cooking later. 
<laughs> cooking the Easter dinner. We're having ham and green bean casserole and squash casserole, mashed potatoes and gravy and rolls. Okay, so now that's it's not much, but it's on there. And I think I want to take a piece of this. Oh, I know what we could do. We'll take a piece of the coffee dye. We're going to let this show for the most part. Because it's not, I pay attention when I when I use the books, guys, and make sure I have no books with uglies because we don't want uglies in our books. I have one that's got a lot of ugly words on it. And I'm going to tell you what I did with that one. It's labeled underpants. And if you watch Lori Marie Jenkins, she calls her book paper the underpants because it's the first layer. It's like when you get dressed, your underpants is your first layer. So she makes all three books all the time. And the first thing she puts on those pages is what she calls her underpants. And it's a collage of book paper to help strengthen the pages. So I have a book block that I know has got uglies in it. And... <laughs> Ruiz says he's at the age where he needs a nap. I know. Coming very, very soon. So I know it has uglies in it. So I won't use it in this way. Now, if I'm going to be completely covering that paper, that's what it's for. And I have it labeled with a rubber band on it as underpants. So I know not to accidentally do this with it and somebody get a page with ugly words in their journal because I don't want that to happen. And y'all be sure and subscribe to the new people. Kelly and Robin have a great channel. Roy's got a great channel. Nancy has a great channel. Show the love, you guys. You know, and check their channels out. But they do have great channels. Show everybody some love. And I wish I had enough subscribers to get people to a thousand. But I'm trying to get there for <laughs> myself. But we can do what we can. We can all show the love and be, you know, nice and everything. Okay, so I'm going to just thin line glue this down. Just a little thin line. And our, our, sign, our, our journal is going to have one signature in it. And see, then I had an idea the other day. I was watching Gail Agnostelli. I don't know if y'all know who she is. Yeah, Nancy, it's I don't sleep right. I'm going to tell you. Oh, don't. No problems, Roy. Um, so. What was I saying? Oh, I was watching Gail Agnostelli. And if y'all don't know who she is, I'll put her link when this goes up. But um, she has what she's calling an idea book. She has like three idea books. And I was thinking, if I go back through my journals that I've made, they all have, they all do have pockets. They all do have envelopes, but they're not all the same. And for that reason, I think an idea book. Oh, thank you, Mary. Y'all are so sweet. I think an idea book would be a great like journaly book to have where I can go back through. Hi, Robin. Thank you for coming. She's the other part of Kelly and Robin. So Kelly is the one that shows crafts by Kelly and Robin. That's Kelly. And this is Robin. Thank you for coming. Anyhow, I think an idea book would be great because I don't want to take out all my journals and, you know, flip back through my journals to figure out what I want to make and trying to remember everything I've made is, oh my. So. I think an idea book where I could make one and just clip it in or paper clip it in with a real paper clip and not one of my manufactured ones um, would be great. But I would also want to have some of my paper clips in there because I make so many different kinds of paper clips. So I'm thinking about making an idea book to put all my different ideas in. So we have this now. It's got a matte paper down the side. It's got this on it. And then what I was thinking was, 
I don't want to do this. We're going to just tear it. We'll finesse the corners and stuff in a minute if we need to. Like that one I don't like. And y'all, I have inks. Again, I forget to use my inks and ink my edges. But I, I kind of don't really like everything to be all inked up. And I like how that looks on there. Now, see, we can put a word on here later. We could put a little tiny image. All kind of things. So I think we're just going to glue this down. And let it be until we're ready to work in the journal. And then... We'll have it. Even putting a piece of lace on it. Because our journal will probably have, even though it's a junk journal, it's going to have some lace and stuff on it. So, I like that. I think that looks really pretty. So, now, see, I've got stuff like this that's sitting back here. Made from book paper. Waiting to be embellished. This is a side pocket. So what we could do is something like this. If you make them ahead of time. Which I just sit and make these while watching television. Or talking on the phone. Is we need a strip. So I'm going to cut a strip of paper. And I like this ledger paper. So if we wanted to put this on here. We could put it. Which I didn't cut it correctly. Leave it to me. Put it on here. And then take a strip of this coffee dyed paper. Which we need to cut down a little bit. For what I want to do. I not probably cut that too much. No I didn't. Okay we're going to leave that. So let's deal with this side first. And I also believe in using the tools that God gave me above all. And that's my fingers. My fingers get messy. And it doesn't bother me. That's why we have wet paper towels and stuff. Okay, so we're going to have this on here like this. And I do have some trimming to do. And this is a tag. And then what I want to do is slide this if I can. And I probably cannot. So we'll just make sure that it goes right up against that edge. Or we'll nip the corners off. So that it will slide in a little bit. There we go. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Okay, so there we have it. Yes, I have Kool-Aid dye, spray dyes made. Thank you, Tina, for the idea book. So I think we're going to be making an idea book on here soon. But it's going to have to get in line with some other stuff. Y'all know how I am. So that will slide in there like that since we cut the corners. And I'm going to trim it in a minute. So I'm just going to guesstimate where we need our glue to go. And I know I need this edge to be gluey, so I'm going to just put that on there. Pick up our pocket. And what that's going to do is, I don't want to glue it down shut, but as we're putting stuff in here, it creates a smooth place for stuff to, to go in. Now we're going to pick this up and grab all the scrappy parts off and trim it. So the book page acts kind of like your cardstock. You can show it. You cannot show it. Treat it just like you would cardstock for some of the center paper. Okay. And this is a good place if we wanted to put lace. Put lace when we're working on it. Because it's there. And I didn't cut my paper right. So. And if y'all hear snoring, I apologize. My dog sleeps under my desk when I'm in here and she snores she snores loud 
Okay, yeah, I got too many layers of stuff. These are the paper paper things. Placemats that we got at the thrift store last year. They were like 50 cents a piece or something. And we got them for me to use on my craft desk. So, so now we have this side and it's a tag. So being that it's a tag, we can decorate the back. And I did not trim that very well. So we could paint the back. We could um, make just a pocket at the bottom and leave this to put decoration on because there's some, let's see, where did they go? Like I have these images from the maps and stuff and like this one. So these could be things we put on our pockets later. Because remember when we went through, when we were talking about picking paper, it was, you know, be selective and look at the back of your paper. So where did my stack of map pages go? Oh, here they are. So like on here, if we wanted to decorate this, let's see what we got on this map. Oh, there's all kind of stuff on this. This was from Wisconsin. Mm. So I'm just looking to see what kind of, because your matte paper is really awesome. I kind of think, let's just do this. We're going to kind of fussy cut this little part right here out. I like this color. Okay, so this will go up here, is what I'm thinking, and then we'll make a pocket down here. And I'm going to cut the grid paper different. How big of a pocket? Great thing about grid paper, you guys, it's got lines on it. If I have a line to follow, I can cut a straight line. I just can't, like, freehand cut. And I can't even cut a straight line following a line, as you can see. Let's go with this one right here and trim this up. So I think we're going to make a pocket and have this as like our little page decoration. And we're going to keep the word showing. Oh, the Kool-Aid works great to color dye your paper. Just make sure you get sugar free. You want the sugar-free Kool-Aid, otherwise your paper will be sticky, sticky, sticky. So, yeah, the sugar-free Kool-Aid is the way to go. I used it, and I made alcohol sprays with it by mixing it up. I mixed it with warm water just to dissolve it. Then I added the alcohol into the spray bottle. Awesome stuff. And it smells good. I love the way the blue raspberry stuff smells. <laughs> So, I'm going to just glue this little flap, this little flap, and I'm going to put a little thin line at the bottom so our stuff doesn't fall out when we use our pocket. And then... We're just going to glue this up here. At the top. And so this tag, we have a tag that's going to go in a pocket, but it has a pocket. It has a slide in and slide out thing. And it's nicely decorated on this side. So it's going to be a tag and work just like a regular tag. It's just a tag with extras. So I'm going to put it over here to dry. Now, another thing I wanted to show you guys today. Well, let me go on and cut these up while we're just talking. So these are images that I got 
Harper's Bazaar magazine is a magazine I subscribe to. And they had these vintage images in the magazine, and I cut them out. Oh, I wanted to scan these. I can scan them after. But um, I cut them out because I was like, oh, those are great images. And since I'm working on a um, no, I can't print stuff journal. Because I think I fall back on printing too much, you guys. I love, don't get me wrong, I love the journal kits. And you can buy some really awesome journal kits, you know, through Etsy and stuff. And they're gorgeous. And I love them. But I think I rely too heavily on that. And I'm making a secret project where I did buy a journal kit for it. However, it was like a paper pad more than a journal kit. Um, I bought background pages only. So for that journal, I've had to make all my own tags. I have had to make my own pockets. It didn't, that journal kit didn't come with anything but background paper. And so I have created for that. Everything that's gone in that journal, I have had to make by hand pretty much. Which is great practice for this journal. I mean, yeah, I could use some printed images and stuff on that one. But as far as most journal kits come with, you know, tickets. And they come with the envelope templates. And they come with pretty much everything you need. It's like a project pack. Not this one. It was just the background pages. And you guys, I would never go buy a paper pad. Y'all know that. Because I just, it's a use once and done kind of thing. Whereas the downloadables are, I have it to use forever. So I'm not going to waste our cardstock. I am going to go back through here and pick out which ones to save. Because you know I saved this scrappy stuff. And I did mount these on coffee dyed cardstock. So, and these are going to go in our journal. So we have things to go in that journal. Let's see, that's a bigger scrap, bigger scrap. I have a scrap bucket where I put things like this that I can use for paper clips. And y'all, if you don't have, if you don't want to coffee dye or you don't have the time to coffee dye, these really pretty papers like this, I scan in and I have made them available in my Zibit store. Very reasonably priced. Um, because sometimes I don't even want a coffee dye paper. And it's really easy to print it on the back of a sheet of paper. Because I double print. I print double sided for my journals. And so coffee dye is a great other side of the paper. That's card. We'll just put it up here. Okay. And then that could be a pocket. So now let me clean off all these little things that aren't going to get saved. There we go. Okay. So any questions on anything so far? I need to put these in the little journal bucket. Am I going too fast? Do y'all want to see something else again? Now, I had something else out for you guys. I made this last night because we're going to need some embellishments like this in our journal. And so I made this one last night because I needed to practice doing them again because I do mine different than most other people. I have stuff out to make one of these for you guys today or similar. Where? Oh, there it is. So I can show you how this, it's a double layer flower, but it's not complicated. Oh, thank you, Mary. So the way I do this kind of a flower, and I'm going to show you a different one, is I took coffee dyed paper. I scrunched it all up. Because you got to have wrinkles in your paper. I unscrunched it. I then cut a strip of paper. It does not matter how, how wide are you going to want your flower. 
and you want it double the width that you want your flower. We're going to put that aside because now here's, I can't do that manipulation where you scrunch it, scrunch it, scrunch it, hold it, scrunch it, scrunch it, and then you glue it. I can't do that. I tried that. It didn't work for me. So I came up with my own way. And here's my way. I now have this strip. I have folded it in half. I am now going to glue with a very thin line of glue. So we may not get to, well, we'll let this dry while we work on the other one I have. Very thin line of glue. And I'm not going to glue the whole thing. I need this opening to stay open up there. So I'm kind of like putting a seam of glue, just a seam of glue on my paper. And we're going to let this one dry while I work on a different one. Let me grab my needle. Because while making this one last, this one last night, I thought there's a better way. So I have this scrappy bit of lace and a strip of paper. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go through the paper and the lace. Um, I need a tail. I'll fix that in a second. I'm going to tie a knot right here so that I hope y'all can see this. I may have to zoom in. I want to tie a knot so that my thread doesn't get pulled through. Oh, that would be horrible. Can you imagine getting to the end and your thread coming through? Now, I have not seen anybody do them this way. That doesn't mean they haven't been done this way. So I'm not claiming to be the inventor of this. It's just how I do them because I can't, my hands won't do that other thing. So now I have those tied together. And all I'm going to do is what I normally do. I am just going to hold this and weave the needle in and out of the paper and the lace at the same time. And I am using a bigger needle. Now, I didn't glue the lace down because it would have made it really stiff and hard to work with. And this needs to go better. So this is going to work or not work. I haven't ever made one this way. I think it'll work. Okay, I'm going to pull some of this down because I'm getting, my needle is getting stiff. There we go. Ouch. I poked myself. Oh, I missed a paper a couple of times. Well, we're not going to work. Well, should we worry? Oh, that's way back there. Well, let's go back. Because, because I missed the paper, or did it rip through the paper? Oh, it ripped the paper. Oh, we're going to have to be careful. I think we can make it work. We're going to try to make it work. We may glue it. I'm just going to pull that all the way through. Uh-oh, what happened? There we go. I think what I am going to do, I don't want to glue it. Did it really rip the paper? It didn't. I don't see that it ripped the paper. Okay. Let's go back because it's not going to work if we don't start over. So, uh oh, oh, come on. It's not a rocket science thing here. And I don't want to rip my paper. I just want to pull my thread back out. Which shouldn't be this hard, guys.
but it's going to prove to be this difficult. I don't know what happened. You would think just sewing a basting stitch would not be this hard to pull your thread out. But here we go. You know what? Let's do this. I got a long enough length of thread here. I am just going to snip this stuff apart. Not with those scissors. Those are all gummed up for me snipping tape and These evidently are gummed up too. There we go. See, that's how it's supposed to just pull apart. Oh, come on. Okay. I'm ending up with a tangled up thread mess. Okay, let me pull this. I need to come down here and snip where I made my knot. And that's a simple snip the paper. Snip the end of the lace off. We got rid of the knot. Now, I should just be able to pull. That's the piece I need to work with because that's the long piece. I know it always works better. Off of camera. Okay, so we're going to go again. I have my thread that I just dropped. I have my needle. Now I have to re thread on camera that I missed. <laughs> it's a big eye to y'all. <laughs> I don't have the needles that curve. That would be a great needle to use for this. Okay, so we're going to do this again. But we don't want to miss the paper this time. And I thought I was getting both layers. So, and I am not even going to worry about tying a knot. I'm just going to pay careful attention. So we want to make sure that we get both layers of paper and lace each time. Otherwise, it's not, we're going to have the same problem and it won't gather correctly at the end. I don't know why it just doesn't want to put three right there. But I figured if people could sew on paper with a sewing machine, which I've done, we could sew on paper with needle and thread. Oh, I think I see what happened. I missed. Well, no, I had it all through the lace. But we could do it this way and make flowers. And they're really pretty flowers. And if you have spray inks before you attach your middle, you can color them with your spray inks. Okay, Nancy. So, okay. I am at the end of where I need to be. So, before I pull that all the way down, I'm going to snip this paper off. Now, in about an hour, guys, we're going to be off of here way before that. But I'm going to go live on Aaron. Oh, gosh. I don't remember Aaron's last name. Costner. K-O-S-S-N-E-R. We're going to be making altered dominoes for a swap. On a Facebook group, Kateri's Crafty Ideas, I think is what it's called. Now, this is the difficult part, getting it pulled down without tearing your paper. That's the thing. You don't, we can't rip our paper. Okay. So, here's my end. So, what I want to do is I'm going to come back up here and just go back through this end. So, both of my threads are right here together. And I'm going to tie them in a knot. Well, not yet. I'm going to tie them together, but not in a knot. Just that. Right over left thing. Left over right. Okay. And then I'm going to pull it. And then I'm going to squish it. So this is all technicals. Pulling and squishing. 
to get it how I want it to look. That's good to me. So now I'm going to tie the knot. And then I'm going to find a different pair of scissors in my little scissor stash over here. And snip those strips. Okay. Set my needle aside because we're going to need it for the other one. So this is what we end up with. It's a little flower. It's got a lace edge on it. And it may be too poofy to put in a journal, but we could decorate our cover with these. And so there you have it. And I really don't like how this one little edge is by itself. So as long as I don't snip my threads, I can snip that off and snip that little corner part off. There we go. And so there you have your little flower. I think that's very cute. What do you guys think? Hi, Teresa. How are you? Thank you for coming. And I missed that you came in. And I'm so sorry. So what do you guys think of our little book paper flowery thing? So now for this one that we glued together. And it's dry enough to work with. We're going to take our needle again. And the edge that we glued is the edge that we're sewing. We're going to keep this opening alone. So again, we are just going to weave in and out. And really the glue is just temporary so you don't have to try to squeeze all this. I'm trying to back my needle up a little bit because that was a big gap. The glue is a temporary holder because we're sewing it. Okay, now because it's starting to stiffen up and I can't move it, I'm going to slide it back a little bit. The book paper does not slide like material. I am just going to be honest. It's stiff. It's. I'm probably making this look way easier than it really is. But it's worth it. Because you can't go buy book paper flowers. And they all look different. But I like this method where I glue the little edge together. Because this is going to get me that double layered flower in a moment. I'm going to go on and slide this down if I can. A smaller needle would probably be helpful, but I have trouble threading needles, you guys. So bigger's better for me. There we go. Now it's moving. And now I'm going to come back up here and just continue the gathering technique. Oh, and I needed to let you guys know, Joe is not, and she was working on an album, um, templates and stuff that she made, and she was doing it live, and she hasn't been live for a couple of days, and she asked me to let you guys know, there was a death in her family, and so that's why she hasn't been live, it's have at it, um, and so that's why she hasn't been live working on that, those videos will continue next week, she said. So she wanted me to let you guys know that. And I meant to do that at the beginning. Okay, so now we have this in our, here's our tail thread over here. Here's where we're coming out. We're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to come back around here. And we're going to just come up through next to that tail thread. And I'm going to just tie it 
but not in a knot. I just want them to be together. I don't want to knot it yet. Now, I'm going to pull. And pull. And then we're going to squish it. Technical squishy term. And I kind of like that. So, once you have it how you want it. Um, let me snip my needle off of here. Because I don't need all this st stuff. Let's see. That's the tail. This is the needle side. Clip it off. Move the needle out of the way. We don't want to lose it. Now that we have it, we can tie the knot. And then I'm going to show you how you get your double layer. And this is beading thread. You can use any kind of thread. I have used regular sewing thread for this. I'm just using what I have on hand. Okay, so now, I'm going to come in here and snip those off and get rid of them. Okay, let me snip them a little closer than that. That one doesn't want to snip. I think I need to buy some new scissors or sharpen these. Okay, so now we have this, right? And remember, we folded it. So here's what happens. We are going to just go in and snip the very edge of where we folded it. And there's no perfect way to do this, guys. It's just trim it off. So you're just going to work your way all the way around. Trimming off. And once you have it all trimmed off, you're just going to pick a spot to start. And this is kind of like when we made flowers in high school, we used tissue paper. And we folded it in a fan fold, sandwiched it together, and then we had to go through and fluffy them. And so, that's what we're doing now. We are just going through, separating the edges. of our flower and there we have it now we've been all the way around so now we just need to reflatten it sort of and it doesn't go back as flat as it was because now it's a double layered flower so that's how you can make little double layered flowers without having to layer your paper fold it in half make that little seam mark and then stitch it and then you have this and it just needs a flower center of some kind so whatever you use for those. Okay, guys. Unfortunately, I need to hop off of here because I got to get ready to do the altar dominoes in 30 minutes. So I got to clean all this up and move on to altar dominoes. I will be back live on Tuesday at 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 Central, 12 Mountain, 11 Pacific. And I will post it. If you're not a member of my Facebook group, the link is down below. My Facebook group doesn't really do anything. We're a very inactive group. And that's okay. It's a place for us to share our art, though. Post when you're going live. Post when you're doing a video so we can all go watch. Hi, Jacqueline. Thank you for coming. I missed you. And welcome to my, my channel. Because I know this is your first time. And I am so sorry that I missed you. And I hate that I have to go, but I know because um, I know because uh, Aaron just tried to get me on on Hangouts. So we're trying to get everything all set up. So it's Aaron Costner. K I think it maybe it's either K O S S N E R or K O S T N E R at 
five o'clock Eastern in about 30 minutes. We're going to be doing ultra dominoes. I got no idea what I'm doing. I'll come up with something. And so I got to get all my little stuff cleaned up so I can go live on there. But we're going to be doing that live. But if you want to join the Facebook group, just go in and, you know, join. We just post. I, that's where I post that I'm going live is on there. I post it on my, because right now, most of my Facebook is more crafting people than other people. So I post it on my Facebook page. I also post it on my Foxy's Creations Facebook page. That is it, Tina. Aaron Klossner, thank you. And so we're going to be doing Ultra Dominoes on there in about 30 minutes. So I hate to go and run you guys, um, but I'll be back on Tuesday. I hope everybody has a happy Easter. Enjoy your friends and family. And you're welcome, Robin. Thanks, guys. See y'all later and have a great Easter weekend. Bye, everybody.